Hello guys, welcome to another lecture series from EcoPoint. In this series of lectures, I will be discussing with you introductory statistics, which will create our ground before we move into intermediate one. In today's lecture, I'm going to talk about the basic concept of population and samples and try to weave you a story with which you will be able to understand why do we do statistics? Why are we doing what we are supposed to do? So let's get started. Everything in statistics that you must have uh, heard of, so statistics revolves around something called data. Now, whether it's a scientist, whether it's a researcher, engineer, or in any do domain for that matter. So anyone who's researching on something, that person would constantly collect some facts. Data is nothing else, but it's the facts that this person, this researcher will collect. Now, what is statistics? And how are they related to each other? Statistics is simply uh, something that provides methods for organizing these facts. Now, you have a lot of facts with you, but you got to organize them in order for you to be able to understand, get more meaning out of your collection of facts. In this process, there comes two very, very important words, population and sample. Population by the name of it, you know, it feels like we're talking about population of a country, right? It feels like we're talking about people, not necessarily. Population simply means, so when we use the word population in statistics, we are taking all into consideration. When I'm saying all, what does it mean? Suppose I want to collect data on individuals who are graduating in economics in the current year, in the current academic year. When I say all the students in the country, that constitutes population. So population comes from the idea. An investigation will typically focus on a well-defined collection of objects constituting a population of interest. When I'm saying that, it basically means, for example, I want, you know, I want to have the data for uh, students who receive BA economics honors during the most recent academic year. So if I'm taking the data for all such individuals, that would be population. But think about it. Is it possible for us to be able to get that data? It's difficult. It's difficult. It's It takes a lot of time, a lot of money. It takes a lot for a researcher to get data on the entire population. And that's the reason, since it is very impractical, what we instead do, we try to find out samples. Now, sample would be a subset of population. And again, the object of interest, your interest is getting the data for individuals who are um, who are receiving BA Economics Honours degree in the most recent academic year, right? When I say I'll take samples, that means in the whole country, I would collect data from some colleges in the whole country you know, some colleges from the country. For example, I take, okay, fine, I can't go to the entire uh, nation, but I can get the data for Delhi University maybe, okay? It is impractical to get all the desired information for all objects in the population. So instead, a subset of population, a sample that is, is selected. Now, why are we collecting this data? We are collecting this data because usually we are interested in certain characteristics. We are usually interested in certain characteristics of the object in the population. For example, you might be interested in the gender of the economic uh, honors graduate or the age at which the individual graduates. So now what are the characteristics that we are looking at? We might be interested in the gender, gender being male, female. Now, gender is something that we can categorize, right? But on the other hand, if I'm talking about age, age will be a number, right? So that becomes a numeric data, okay? Now, these characteristics that we are talking about, these characteristics are taken as variables. So any characteristic whose value may change from one object to another in the population. So you take one student, male, one student, female, one student, uh, graduating at 21 years, one student graduating at 22 years. So the value can keep on changing. So therefore, these are called variables. Now, clearly what we have understood right now is that our variables could be category, category oriented or could be numeric. Suppose we have, uh, you know, type of transmission in say we are taking 10 cars. 
type of transmission means is it a manual car or an automatic one transmission is uh, manual or automatic okay so m for manual a for automatic suppose i am taking this data so with this example let's understand the two things if i am taking this data for all cars of say one brand say let's take hyundai as a brand all cars in india uh, you know from uh, this brand if i am taking data on that that's population data but if I'm taking the data for just 10 cars, a sample of 10 cars, then that becomes sample. And data is when you write down this the value that you're giving to the characteristic for each. That becomes your data. Similarly, if instead of type of transmission, I'm interested in the battery life. Now, battery life will be, if it's for the same car, we're talking about car battery, or we can you know think in some other terms also, some other batteries. Now, there's a certain lifetime attached to each, right? So if you're taking lifetime of battery, that will be numeric. Your variables, generally we take the lowercase x, y, z, that's how we take it. Variable in the data is basically the characteristic. Suppose, you know, for the students only, I am also interested in the brand of watch that uh, they own, okay? Then that that is one characteristic I'm interested in. So that is one variable. It would, it would vary from person to person. Someone is wearing Titan, someone is wearing a coat, someone is wearing something else. Y could be another variable, which could be the number of visits to a particular website during a specified uh, time period. Say the data is for the same um, group of students. So that's another characteristic I'm looking at. Let's take another example to understand population and sample here. Now, suppose a scientist wants to uh, know something about a particular disease in the entire world. Okay. Now, population data would mean that you have the name and details of every person with disease, let's say X, okay? Now, it's impossible for a researcher to go to each person and write down all the symptoms and everything in order for enhancing the research, okay? But what instead this person could do is that this researcher can, at least in his own country or her own country, find some, say, 50 people or 100 people, 50 patients, with the same disease. That is a sample. Now, why is this process done? This process is done so that you're able to get some results out of the sample, which you are able, with which you are able to make some inferences about the population. Suppose, say, when you have this particular disease X, the life expectancy is different from a normal person who doesn't have this disease, okay? So it's easy for the researcher to find the average life expectancy of these 50 people, say that turns out to be 60 years. In general, you will not have the life expectancy of the entire population or suffering from this disease. So for the sample, you will be able to figure out this life expectancy, average life expectancy for population you don't have. but you can make some inferences using the data that you have for the sample about the population uh, average life expectancy as well. So what essentially we are doing? We are taking sample from the population. The investigator would like to use the sample information to draw some conclusions about the population. And that is what is making an inference. And that is what the entire inferential statistics is all about. So remember that sample is a means to an end. It's not the end in itself, okay? It's just the way for us to be able to make some inferences about the entire population. In making these inferences, there are three kind of procedures usually used. Point estimates, confidence interval estimations, and then uh, hypothesis testing is used. Now, what essentially is happening? Probability reasons from the population to the sample, whereas inferential statistic reasons from the sample to the population. Now some notations. Whenever you're talking about population, in general, the characteristics that we were talking about. From population, if you're interested into something, that those are called parameters. What you are interested in are parameters. For example, mean. For example, standard deviations. For example, Variance, for example, proportion, mean. When you are talking about mean of the entire population, that's population parameter and 
is denoted as mu in general. When you are talking about population parameter, that is the standard deviation of the entire population, that is denoted as sigma. When you talk about variance of the entire population, that's a population parameter, sigma square. When you're talking about proportion in general, for the population, it's given as p. The same characteristics for sample, they are called sample statistics. Now, mean for a sample statistic, for a sample would be given as, denoted as x bar. Standard deviation would be denoted as s. Variance would be denoted as s square. Population, param, population uh, proportion for the sample, sample proportion. Sample proportion is generally denoted as p hat. Now coming to these notations, the whole idea is that you will be taking up the sample. Sample statistics are something that you calculate. These can be calculated, right? And then you make inferences about the population parameter. Let's see if you understood this. Average height of all men in India. If I talk about average height of all men in India, is it this a population parameter or a sample statistic? Well, that's a parameter because I'm taking all men in India. Average test marks of all students in the class. Well, that again is a parameter because I've taken it for all. So we will be taking it as population. Population is the entire class. That means and it's a parameter. But on the other hand, if I say average test marks of the top 20 students in the class, this would be statistic. That's the difference between sample and population. Thank you very much, guys. I'll stop here today. And in the next lecture, we will continue this discussion and talk more about how to deal with data.